Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Skyzone 030 OLED FEV goggles. In this video I'm going to go over their features and compare their internal screens with other type of goggles and in the next couple of days I'm going to release another video where I'm going to test their internal receiver. The Sky 030 is the upgraded version of the Sky 03 which was released last year. O stands for OLED since it's using OLED displays with a resolution of 1024 by 768 and in addition Skyzone also released the Sky 03S which is using cheaper LCD screens with a resolution of 800 by 600 and cost $40 less. Another difference between the versions is that the field of view of the Sky 030 is 35 degrees whereas the field of view of the Sky 03S is the same as the Sky 03 and it's 37 degrees. So basically the Sky 03S are upgraded Sky 03 with better ergonomics and different DVR whereas the Sky 030 feature the OLED screens which might be a game changer since it's challenging the current dominator in the market, the FedShock HDO which are my current favorite goggles and I'm also going to use these goggles for the next week or two and then decide if I'm going to switch to these goggles or I'm going to stick to my current favorites. Inside the box you can find the user manual, two simple linear antennas that you are probably not going to use with an SMA connector, Futaba and JR data cables for using the head tracker with your remote controller, an XT60 to DC power adapter, an AV cable, and inside the famous Skyzone case, you'll get in the goggles with one faceplate already attached and you're also getting a second one so you can choose which one fits you best. So you can see that the second one is narrower than the one that which is already assembled and this is a very nice feature that enables you to customize your goggles and make sure that they fit you properly. In addition, you are also getting two pieces of foam and two velcro stickers for attaching the foam to the faceplate and you should pay attention that they differ from each other and you should match the correct piece of foam and velcro sticker with the correct faceplate. I recommend of course to try both options to see which one fits you best and I think that it could have been nicer if Skyzone would already pre-attach the velcro sticker because it's a little bit annoying to attach it and you should also note that you should be extra careful while assembling and disassembling the faceplates as the plastic parts can be fragile and unfortunately as you can see I already broke this part over here. The diopters that comes with the goggles are just clear ones and their purpose is to protect the lens and if you wish you can simply remove these diopters after removing the faceplate and use any Fetcher compatible diopters. So as you can see my optic fisher diopters fits perfectly inside the diopter slots and if you wish to learn more about the optic fisher diopters you can check out my review over here. In terms of features and internal menus the Sky 030 are very similar to the Sky 02X which I've recently reviewed. Just like the Sky 02X it's available in different colors and designs and the reason I chose to go with the black metallic version which might be the less exciting option out of the ones that are available is because that I experienced with this version of the Sky 02X some light leakage and I can confirm that it doesn't happen with the black version. Now even though these goggles might look similar they are completely different first of all in terms of specifications and also in terms of pricing. Here you can see the Sky 030 next to their main competitor the FetShock HDO. In terms of similarities both goggles are using OLED displays and their aspect ratio is fixed to 4x3. The list of differences is a little bit longer. So first of all the Sky 030 feature an internal diversity receiver that supports 48 channels so on both sides of the goggles you can find SMA antenna connectors. The FedShock HDO however does not come with a receiver and it features a model bay that enables you to use your own one. The upside is that it enables you to use multiple types of receivers including 2.4 GHz ones and also advanced receivers such as the Immersion LC Rapid Fire and the Furious FV True DX. The main downside is that you will need to purchase the receiver separately whereas it's already included in the price of the Sky 030. In addition the resolution of the Sky 030 is 1024 by 768 and their field of view is 35 degrees. The field of view of the FedShock HDO is a little bit bigger and it's 37 degrees 
However, the resolution is a little bit lower than the Sky Zero Trio, and it is 960 by 720. Another small difference is that the IPD of the Fetchup HDO can be adjusted between 59 to 69 mm, and the Sky Zero Trio offers a wider range, so you can adjust it between 57.5 up to 69.5 mm. Moving on on the list of differences, the Sky Zero Trio features a built-in head tracker, whereas you will need to purchase one separately on the Fetchup HDO and then place it inside this model bay over here. The Sky Zero Trio also feature a front VGA camera that enables you to watch your surrounding without having to remove your goggles. Feature an on and off switch, support 3D FPV, can be powered off directly using batteries between two to six cells. Feature a pretty cool front LED light, which you can adjust using the settings of the goggles. And finally, features a pretty powerful fan with adjustable speed, and unlike the FetchUp HDO, you don't have to connect it to the balance connector of the battery in order to turn it on. Now using this pretty scary display mannequin head, I'm going to show the field of view differences between the HDO, Sky Zero Trio, and the Sky Zero 2X. The reason I'm using this device that I built is because it's going to make sure that the distance between the screens of the goggles and the eyes of the mannequin head, which are Cadex Total V1 camera, is going to be the same when comparing the three goggles. Now you can see the flight footage of the iFlight Cinebi 4K, and I'm recording the internal screens of the FetchUp HDO, and on all goggles I use the HDMI output of my computer. Now I'm going to overlay the screen of the Sky Zero Tree O, and as you're about to see, even though on the paper the field of view of the Sky Zero Tree O is smaller than the FetchUp HDO, you can see that it actually looks pretty similar. Now I'm going to overlay the screens of the Sky Zero 2X, and as you can see, the field of view is of course significantly smaller, and if you're going to set the Sky Zero 2X to 4x3, it's going to crop the size of the video, and then of course the field of view is going to be much smaller. This, by the way, does not indicate the quality of the internal screens, and for that I also recorded the internal screens using my GoPro 7, and still it's a little bit hard to show you the differences in terms of quality. So right now you're seeing the internal screens of the Sky Zero Trio, and now I'm going to show you the internal screens of the FetchUp HDO. So it's a little bit hard to show the difference because I think that this quality does injustice for both HDO and Sky Zero Trio, but what I do can tell you is that the quality of the Sky Zero Trio is amazing. Both screens are great, but I must admit that the screens of the Sky Zero Trio look better than the FetchUp HDO. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to start using the Sky Zero Trio for the next week or two, and if I'm going to like them, I'm going to switch to these goggles. I don't have any sentiments for the FetchUp HDO, and if it's not going to be a good choice, I'm going to tell you that, of course, and I'm going to stick with the FetchUp HDO. Overall, I can tell you that my first impression is that FetchUp just met a very strong competitor, and I'm really looking forward to experience these goggles in the next two weeks and then tell you what I think about these goggles. In addition, I'm also going to post another test in the next few days where I'm going to compare the internal receiver of the Skyzone Sky Zero Trio O with the Rapid Fire and maybe other models, so stay tuned for the upcoming video. I'm going to leave you with some more footage of the internal screens of the HDO and the Skyzone Sky Zero Trio, but remember, as I mentioned before, it's not a very good way of experiencing these goggles, and you have to try them for yourself in order to get the best experience. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Sky Zero 3O, or you have any suggestions for tests that I should perform, feel free to leave your comments in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.